Hey, moron! Hey, moron! Look, look, look at me! I'm the woo water boy, dude! What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of Watching a Moron, as we have gotten to 100,000 plus subscribers, and that makes me want to work that much harder to make sure I bring you all the news and everything on the Dallas Cowboys, as well as my opinions, which, you know, we're all... Uh, we all have our own opinions and way of doing things, and definitely I have mine. Um, at 9 o'clock, we're going to do a live stream um, basically celebrating that we have 100,000 subscribers and me basically thanking you guys. But I wanted to um, touch on something here, which uh, everybody's got the doom and gloom for the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, the, I'm, I'm trying to be the voice of a release reason and say, it's not going to be a five and 11 season. It's not going to be. And we'll do what we always do. We'll be pretty good. But the Cowboys, believe it or not, I was seeing a tweet by um, Dave Howman who said that we have too many holes to fix through the draft, which I, I agree with. Um, I definitely agree with. But there's the thing that's going to be interesting is, we're going to have money. Right now, we are second worst in the cap situation. Second worst. And it amazes me because a team like New Orleans that was $73 million over the cap is now $16 million under, and the Cowboys have only made one move, and we're sitting here with only $3.8 million, which is kind of crazy. But the Cowboys are going to be getting a boatload of money later on. We as fans want us to go ahead and spend a whole bunch of money on rims. You know, we want some, you know, 22 inch rims and stuff for the, for the thing, for, for the vehicle, you know, that are shiny and new and all that. When the reality is, is if you don't have the engine that runs, the vehicle ain't going to go. I don't care what rims you put on there. And so it's a difference in philosophy, but I, I still have hope because the Cowboys will be getting that nine and a half million from Michael Gallup. Um, come June 1st, we talk about in April, I mean, excuse me, August, that we're going to be doing Dak Prescott's contract, in which case we'll get some more cap relief from there, um, and CeeDee Lambs as well. And the thing that's interesting is if the Cowboys are blowing it up, come next year is going to be where you can really see them be able to make uh, some hay. If they don't sign a big-name free agent, which we don't think they will, they're in line to get about four compensatory picks next year, maxing out. And if you look at the salary cap situation where right now we have about $3 million and the Eagles right now have like 32 or 36, that literally reverses that next year the Cowboys, even with that $36 million dead hit, if the Cowboys get Dak Prescott a long-term deal, that'll be a wash, have about $93 million for next year which if they get CD and, of course, Mike will be part of that, they're going to have a boatload of cap, of cap money and a boatload of picks. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing that you want to understand why you don't want the Cowboys to blow it up. And here's the reason why <clears throat> I'm going to say <clears throat> that you don't want them to blow it up. Take a look right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take a look right now at what's going around <clears throat> with the quarterbacks. Quarterbacks are being traded left and right. I want you to understand something here. Justin Fields went for less than what Trey Lance went for. At worst, you say they're the same guy. At worst. But you can look at Justin Fields and say, that guy has a lot more experience than Trey Lance. Trey Lance only has 103 passing, passing yards in the NFL and only has three starts and four games. So you literally gave up more for that guy than what Justin Fields was giving up or Mac Jones and so on. You're seeing those guys traded for nothing. The Cowboys overpaid. So if you blow this up and you decide we're going to trade Micah Parson and CeeDee Lamb, 
Remember, we're the guys that traded Amari Cooper for a fifth-round draft pick when the Titans traded A.J. Brown for a first round. We pay too much when we trade for a guy. Because remember, we gave up a number one to get Amari Cooper. We then traded him for a fifth. The only reason that San Francisco traded with us was because we blew the offers away. Everybody else was talking about like a fifth round. Excuse me, a sixth round. Six or seven round for Trey Lance. But the Cowboys blew them away with their offer. So if you say, let's trade our assets, do you think that the Cowboys are going to do better? Do you think that the Cowboys are going to get fair compensation or a better deal than what we have with the guys we have? I don't think so. I don't think you want this Cowboys team to start over from Jump Street because I don't think that they know how to do that. They're okay at getting a few pieces here and there, but when it comes to making new contracts, they're awful at it. They get hosed every time. Every big contract comes back to bite them in the ass. When it comes to trades, again, they pay too much and they get too little in return. So in my estimation, I think that this is more of a reload in talent. And I look at this and say that the Cowboys, I know they don't have a lot of draft picks, but they'll be in a position to have more money to work with late in the season, you know, in June and July when teams are releasing veteran players. I would rather have them in right now because it gives you time for them to understand your system and everything else. But if you do bring in those players and those studs and you're getting a two for one, if you end up bringing in a, making a trade like during the draft and getting a Brandon Cooks or a Stefan Gilmore, the Cowboys aren't that far away. The reason that the Washington Commanders, and mind you, I want you to understand something. <clears throat> in free agency, the Cowboys have about the lowest amount of money they've been spending in free agency. Let me, actually, let me, I think I actually have a screenshot of it. The commanders, I think, have one of the highest. So if we're looking at this and we're saying, let me see, do I have it? Yeah, here it is. The, the commanders have spent the most, understand this, have spent the most in free agency in the last three years and have gone 19, 31, and 1. The Cowboys have spent the least and have been NFC champs twice in that time. It doesn't make sense, but I'm telling you, that's why you don't want the Cowboys to go ahead and start all over. I'm telling you, you really don't. All right, good people. I will see you guys at 9 o'clock for our party. We're going to light the candles. We're going to celebrate. I'm going to have a drink of some of that delicious rum and, uh, just talk with you guys about whatever you have on your mind. If you are a channel member, the link is in the community tab. Peace.